If you are up for the challenge of writing a systematic literature review, for example as a project or in more detail as a thesis or dissertation even, then you are in the right place. The art of writing such a review must be learned and depends heavily on how well you have acquired the tools of this method beforehand. To ensure the success of your endeavor, I provide you with seven steps on how to write a systematic literature review in this video. With these seven steps, you will become familiar with this particular method and will be able to structure your methodological approach from beginning to end. It may sound like a lot, but with such a demanding method, these steps are all necessary. So grab your favorite drink, sit back and enjoy the show. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Many thanks to Scribba for sponsoring this video. More about Scribba later. A systematic literature review is a standalone scientific study, meaning it is not intended to be written as part of a larger academic piece. It is confusing because the background section in a paper or thesis is also often referred to as a literature review. I will link a tutorial about writing a regular literature review here once it is produced. What this tutorial is about is the method of conducting a systematic literature review or SLR or systematic review. This form of review originated in medicine where a large number of small studies and results often need to be summarized. However, the systematic literature review has since proven itself useful in almost all other disciplines as well. You should also not confuse it with other forms of review articles, such as a narrative review, a meta-analysis and several other forms. The narrative review, for example, is written from an expert's perspective and weighs some sources and references more than others to build the intended argument. Researchers conducting a meta-analysis are interested in combining the results of statistical calculations from many individual studies. But let's get back to the systematic literature review. The most important characteristic of such a study is the word systematic. You might have heard that the replicability of a research design is particularly important. In a systematic literature review, you are trying to achieve just this. If other researchers would want to replicate the analysis of the literature that you did, they get all the information they need from you. In a systematic literature review, the search is carried out according to a predetermined protocol, so that ideally the same results are obtained upon repeated application. A systematic literature review can pursue three different objectives. To develop an understanding of a research area and to explain a topic in detail. To provide researchers with a condensed overview of a large number of publications on a specific topic. Or it can be used as a basis for theory development or theory testing. To enable you to create such a review, we will now look at the seven steps. These are based on my own experience, as well as the work of von Brocke and colleagues and Durach and colleagues. Step 1. Get familiar with the topic. This you can do in a totally unsystematic way. Before you can start a systematic search, you need to have a basic understanding of the research topic. This can be a bit of a challenge as you are writing the review to achieve this understanding in the first place. However, you will have an easier entry into the systematic part of your work if you just read in an unsystematic way first. This is important to be able to come up with the correct search terms later on. Here are three things to keep in mind. Consider references also from outside your discipline. Look at encyclopedias, Wikipedia or other popular science texts. Set a time or page limit to avoid losing track of your objective. Step 2. Know the reasons for your review. Your work will only be considered good if you can clearly argue why you have chosen a systematic literature review approach and what added value it brings to you and your readers. If you are not sure where to start, read the research design sections of other successfully published review articles. This will give you an idea of how you can argue your case. 
The argument you should follow in the method section also depends on the objective. So consider which of the aforementioned objectives applies to you and argue based on that why you chose a systematic literature review approach and how you established certain criteria for your search process. Step 3. Define your search terms. Now we really come to the systematic part. Here you have endless possibilities for how you can structure your literature search. To simplify things a bit, von Brocke and colleagues define four dimensions. The process. Depending on the objective of the literature search, it can either be sequential, meaning in one go, or iterative, meaning in multiple phases at different times. Sources. This includes the databases you select for your search or other metrics such as the frequency of citations, etc. The simplest option is to use the most important databases in your field and argue that they all cover the literature about your topic well. Coverage. Should your review represent as much literature as possible or focus rather on the most important articles? And then fourth, the search techniques. These include keyword search, forward and backward search. Step 4. Define your search parameters. Now we are already in the search process and the previously mentioned techniques. Typically, you start with a keyword search. That means that you now identify your keywords and several combinations of them. You should choose these in such a way that the search for these keywords spits out the research you actually want. Let's say, for example, you want to write a review on digital assistance in medicine. Here you would need different variants of digital assistant. For example, conversational agent, virtual assistant or comparable terms. Depending on the focus, you would then combine this term with care or clinical or medical. Before we now continue with step 5, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribber. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribber. Just have a look at scribber.com and send me a short email to info at schreib.eu for an exclusive coupon code. Step 5. Identify relevant papers. After conducting a systematic literature search and narrowing down the selection of articles and contributions, you need to identify those that are most relevant to your topic and research question. You can do this by, for example, reading the abstracts of all the papers and eliminating those that don't quite fit the topic. Of course, this should also be done as systematically as possible. What remains is a reasonable number of relevant articles that you should read in detail and include in your analysis. I'm often asked about how many papers one should put in the analysis. You cannot really predict that because you need to consider all the results that you get. By tightening or loosening your selection criteria, you can vary the number of relevant articles you include in your analysis. But keep in mind, relevant remains relevant and sometimes a systematic review yields 10 relevant papers and sometimes 50. You can still decide how deeply you want to delve into the analysis depending on the time available to you and the expectations your supervisor has. In most cases, a thorough analysis with little relevant literature is more valuable than a superficial analysis with many less relevant articles. Always stick to the most important papers in your analysis. You can recognize these by how often they were cited and where they are published. Step 6. Justify every step of your search and selection process. In a systematic literature review, enormous importance is placed on how consistently the research design was conceived and implemented. This includes justifications for every step you took. For example, why were these and those databases selected? Were certain disciplines, journals or conferences excluded and why? Which keywords are relevant and how were they selected? 
Could certain techniques, such as a backward search, have improved the search? Step 7. Visualize your process. In a systematic literature review, it is essential to use tables and figures extensively. In the analysis, for example, it is often helpful to create a large table of all relevant articles and create a kind of matrix. Here you can graphically represent which aspects or results are present or not in each article. This way you can identify areas that have not been sufficiently researched or recognize other patterns that can serve as the result of your review. Here is an example from Montenegro and colleagues. It also helps to create a graphical representation of your search process, for example with some sort of flowchart. Here you can show each step individually. I would position this figure in the section that describes your research design. Pooh, that was a lot of information. I sincerely hope that you haven't lost your interest in conducting a systematic literature review. It really offers unique opportunities and can become a truly high quality thesis or study. If you have any questions about this type of article, please ask them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. I wish you a systematic rest of the day and say goodbye until next time.